So when you find yourself as being the emergency substitute, uh, yeah. as of about 12 hours ago, uh, so I'm going to give everybody a few seconds to leave now, since you're not expecting uh, Pastor Josh or Pastor Earl. Go on, Pam. <laughs> Be dead to me. No, but it's all good. I, uh, you know, anybody that knows me knows that, hey, I, I got a big mouth. I got zero problem with talking or saying something for a couple of minutes anyways. Um, hey, man, I hear you. <laughs> Was that Dave back there? Yeah. All right. So today I want to talk just a little bit about um, something that a lot of people inside the church are struggling with. And I feel like people are sitting in here and they're, they're, kind of wandering around, lost, they're, they kind of uh, don't see an end in sight. They know they're looking for something, but they're not really sure what it is. And I feel like that if you're that person here today, you're struggling with finding your purpose, what it is that you are supposed to be doing in life. We need to understand that God wants us to live in, you know, in a place of joy, he wants us to get out of bed every morning with, with enthusiasm and excitement. Having a purpose helps that. That helps us find our meaning. Now, that doesn't mean that every day is going to be full of, you know, candy canes and, and unicorns. Because let's be real, at the end of the day, sometimes life just happens, right? Sometimes life just, just hits us right in the mouth. But I think it's important to understand that while we're searching for this purpose and while we're going through daily life, we need to understand that decisions that we make, choices that we make, have an effect on what God wants in our lives. Like there's things that we do that changes the course and the plan. You know, it doesn't do any good if God tells you to go down this path if you turn around and go this way. At the end of the day, he wants joy. He wants love. He's going to find you a way to correct you. But there's things that we can do and decisions that we can make that are going to keep us away from what we're supposed to be. You know, you can think about, you know, something you kind of got going against the grain this morning. If, if you are blatantly living against what the Bible says, you're not living in God's purpose. That's just as, as, as blunt as it can be. If you are blatantly, now don't get me wrong, when it, what the, the key word there is blatantly, because we all fall short of the glory of God. But if I get up in the morning and I choose and I make a decision and it's in my head and I know this is wrong, this is not what God wants for my life, and I do it anyways, that's blatant. God cannot bless that. And I've really got to start asking myself questions. Am I living in God's purpose? Am I doing what God has for me in my life? If I, day after day after day after day, repeatedly wake up and choose to live this way, choose to do these things, choose to go against God. Galatians 5, verse 16 16 through 18, I believe. It says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. We are called to walk in the Spirit. He's telling you right here that your flesh, who you are, who you are born to be, your flesh desires everything that is opposite of what you are supposed to do. Everything that is opposite of what you are supposed to be. Everything that is opposite of how you are supposed to live. They are contrary to each other, he says. They're always fighting each other. Because if they weren't, we could do whatever we want, whenever we want. There would, be any, there would not be any consequences to anything. Walk in the spirit. Another way you can, you can kind of feel like, you can kind of understand if you're in God's purpose or not, is if you don't have any joy. God wants us to be joyful. 
He wants you to live joyful. He does not want you to be miserable. It's funny because I am, I don't know, I'm like really kind of anti-social in a certain beings. Like I don't really deal well with others. I don't play well with others unless I'm paying them, right? When it, when it comes to, to people who are working for me, dude, I'm, I can handle that. That's that kind of guy I am, right? I can say, hey, I can, we can be friends. But if they screw up, guess what I can say? Whoa. Hey, yeah, at the end of the day, if you don't get this right, you're fired, right? Get out. So there's, there's something there, right? But in other, th in other directions in my life, like the worship band up here, for example, it's different. Everyone in here is volunteer, right? So if Shark decides he's not showing up Sunday, I can sit him down and I can say, hey, dude, what the heck? Like, what? You kind of put us in a bind, right? But I can't fire him. He's not getting paid. Like, I can, I can tell him that, hey, it's, if you don't fix this, then you're going to be out of the band. It's a little bit different, I guess, with worship than it is, say, like, nursery and volunteer and children's church. Because guess what? There's people in here right now that should be volunteering right now. I'm just saying it. You should be doing something. Don't be sitting, coming in here every week, sitting there, not doing anything, okay? That's not, that's not what we're called to do. But nursery and, volunteer, and, and children's church, guess what? That is the toughest. Because the people who are up here playing instruments, they're really good at what they do. They enjoy playing what God has blessed them to be able to do, right? So you can kind of say, hey, dude, if you don't show up, I'm going to kind of like, I'm going to have to part ways and wait a minute. Things change, right? Because I really enjoy that. If you use that tactic with the people in children's and nursery, guess what? Okay, fire me, right? If I'm there, it's like painting, right? Anybody, I hate to paint. Terrible at it. Like, and I've never even tried to be good at it. Me and my wife's sister are both on the same page. Years ago, we show up and, and my wife's like, oh, she needs help painting. We painted like, I don't know, for like three or four minutes before we both were fired. Get out, get out of my way, don't do it. Get out. Perfect, right? That's the nursery and children's church, right? Because guess what, it's war in there. Don't laugh because it's your fault, those are your kids. No, but I'm saying it's different, right? It's different, you got 40 kids in there. Things are getting, and guess what, next week is Mother's Day, oh. I'm going to be preparing all week because me and a couple other, there's, it's going to be bad. So just a warning, you come in there to get your kid and they've got like residue from where they've been duct taped maybe to a wall, <laughs> don't hold it against the church. But you're supposed to be in joy, joy. If, you're, if you don't have joy in your life, you're just kind of dragging around, right? You're just kind of, just kind of. Every day is just uh, another day. You see other people, you see friends, coworkers, and they're just kind of, man, they're just, they just get it, right? They, they look like they have their whole lives together, friends, family. They, they get out of bed and they got a little spring in their step. They got purpose. They got meaning. They got something to get up and go do. They've got a reason. Galatians 5 Verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Here's talking about that Spirit again. Walking in the Spirit. We've got to have love. We've got to have joy. We've got to have peace. When I was talking about dealing with people that, that I get paid to, to deal with, right? It's real, it comes real simple to me. and I'm in a position now where I, I deal with a lot of of, of employees and a lot of people kind of boots on the ground kind of people that are up here there's a, just a lot of mix and they, they want to all these we've got these geniuses that work for us and what you'll find out about a genius like a a real genius is that nine times out of ten that, that person could like create a nuclear bomb made out of something that they found in the garage but when it comes to everyday simple put a doorknob together, it's, right? 
So last year I was in, a, I was in uh, Tampa for, for business and we, they, they did this team building thing where they go and they put you in this escape room, right? Anybody that's been in an escape room did that thing? Nobody? Oh, there we go. Thank you. So you go to this escape room, they lock you in here. You got to fill out all these puzzles and riddles and all this stuff, right? So we're in there and I've got like people from our executive team and we're, we're a nationwide company. It's a big company. So you know, these people are like the smartest, the best of the best, former nuclear this, that, geniuses. And they're figuring out these riddles that I'm like, I, I would never get out of here. Like, I would never get out of here. But when it comes to like, and I'm sitting there like, how in the world are they, like, how do they know that? Then it comes to this, like, this hillbilly stuff. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that goes there, and that goes there. And they're like... How does, how do you know that stuff? And I'm like, but it's common sense stuff, right? So I had a, I've had conference calls like weekly over the last few months because they want to know, CJ, how is it that you uh, can keep morale up? How is it that you can, can your, you can, your employees like you? How is it? And he keeps going on and he, how can you write this down? And I said, hold on, wait, wait one second. Are you asking me? You want me to write down and tell you how to train someone to genuinely care about someone? And he said, it sounds pretty bad when you say it like that. But yeah. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, I said, I'm going to have to call you back, dude, because i, I got to think about this, because there's things that you do in life that you just do, right? And I begin to think about it, and I begin to think about God and how, how that really ties in, and uh, how all this, you know, it just, why am I the way I am? Why are, why are Christians the way they are? And begin to break it down is that I'm going to have to tell this executive team that the reason that I am the way I am is because of the joy that is put in me through my relationship with God. Like, that's why I get out of bed in the morning and do what I do. It has nothing to do with what we do. Like, what I do for a living is what I do, not who I am. And people, dealing with people, it's, that's, that's just normal stuff. And so I'm thinking, how am I gonna tell this guy who may or may not be a believer, that the reason that I can treat people like they should be treated is because God did that for me? Like, so you begin to break it down, and I, I'm telling you, this is it's funny as heck, because it's how God works, right? Only God does this thing. And so... Last year, at some point, I had I just spouted something off, and the, Josh was going actually going through. Um, there were people at the, at the church were trying to figure out like a three-word thing to kind of uh, put us the church, and it just kind of I don't know what's it called, Whitney, a mission statement. Thank you, Whitney is our uh, I'm good at Whitney because she's the smartest person I know. Um, <laughs> we're not going to talk about common sense. I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to, but. Like a mission statement, three words, what were easy, and he's going all this stuff, and we're kind of going through that. And I begin to say, okay, I can, I can kind of use this for, for my workplace, right? So that's what I, I did. And I was sitting in a meeting full of all these genius people, and they were asking about this and that and this and that, a little bit going on, and I just kind of threw out a saying. And I said, well, well it's real simple. All we got to do to have good employees, to have people that want to work here, that kind of want to do their job is love, grow, and lead them. And one of those genius people looked at it and said, that's fantastic. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't realize that, that could probably be a church mission statement. <laughs> right? Like, love, grow, and lead. You can see that in every church in the country. And it's funny because now we've got shirts that say, love, grow, lead, USIC. Have a company name on it. Logo, love, grow, and lead. And I'm like, you guys are, you don't even know. <laughs> you can have no fulfillment Here's another place you can find out. You're, you're going through, without purpose, fulfillment, right? 
meaningful things? What do you got going on in your life? Are you being fulfilled? You got to find out is, you know, in your relationship, in your job, in your hobbies. You know, are you doing things that challenge you? Are you doing things that are keeping you motivated? Are you being fulfilled? If you're not, you probably need to change. Now, what I'm saying when I say that is, I'm not saying you need to quit your job, especially if you're in this building and you work for me. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that if you, yeah, it's, it's like, like a lot of guys. It's like a lot of guys, it is, right? But I, you know what, that, to, to sell that, I want to surround myself with good people, right? Like, I'll hire every person that I know because I want to be able to count and trust and rely on those people because the more good people that I surround myself with, the better off my life is. Amen. And that goes for me, that goes for you, your friends, your family. Surround yourself with the people who are good, who are striving to do the same thing that you are. I'm not telling you to quit your job. Matter of fact, I know. No, we have a problem with that. There, there is more than enough jobs out there right now to be, to be had, okay? I'm saying, don't, I'm saying if you're not being challenged, if you're not, then maybe you should start looking for something. But, you know, be like me. I, when I was in high school, coming up, I never broke up with a girlfriend until I had the next one lined right up, Amen. right? This is the way it was. Don't be that guy who quits his job and then six months later. And guess what? I interview, and I interview a lot. I have tried to hire 30 people this year. You know how many, let's see, I have done to date this year 125 interviews. Okay? It's brutal. I hate it. Out of those 125, 60 people didn't show, didn't call. Don't tell me there ain't no jobs out there. You're lazy. That's it. So you, you go through this whole thing, and, and I'm like, don't be that, that, per, that person that, that sits there, right? I interview people that come in, and they say, oh, I've been out of work, I, my last job. And I said, well, what have you been doing since then? Well, I've just been kind of looking. That was eight months ago. <laughs> well, I got to find, find the right job. No, 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 you got this thing wrong, dude. You, you don't try to find the right job. You go out and work. I don't care what it is. Get paid, pay bills, take care of your family. Then, once you have that job and you keep that job, then you can start putting out things and looking for a better job. But there ain't no person that's gonna come in here to any interview and say, what have you done for the last year? And you say, well, I've just been looking wrong. <laughs> Did you hear, see how that looks? So you've been doing nothing. Yeah, who's been paying your bills? Oh, I have. Shoe fits, wear it. That's the truth. Jesus came to say the truth. Oh, forgot the disclaimer. Mm, Hoyt, that's on you. Disclaimer that usually put up when, before I speak today is, uh, <laughs> do not hold anything against Revive Church. Pastor Josh, Pastor Earl are not here, right? So how can you find purpose? CJ, you've told me how I, I, I know how I'm feeling. I feel stuck. I feel like I don't know where I'm at. I'm figuring I'm, I'm lost. You got to know what the goal is, first of all. Even the Israelites that, that wandered in the, in the wilderness for 40 years... They were lost. They wandered. But they still had a goal. Right? Where were they headed? The promised land. They didn't know how to get there, but they knew where they were trying to get. That's step one. Know your goal. What are you trying to accomplish? What is it in your relationship with God that you want him to speak? Like, you've got to know that. The most obvious Thing of how, how can God really speak to me? How can, how can God show me his purpose? The obvious one, prayer, talk, communication, right? Ask God for the purpose and then expect that he's going to give it to you. Ask. 
Second thing would be read the directions. What would be the directions? The Bible. Psalms, Psalms 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Without using this, you're wandering in a dark, dark place. Someone says, here's a flashlight, and you say, eh, I'm good. Well, you're going to trip and fall, bust your face. Here's the flashlight. No, eh, I'm good. You fall again, bust your face. Uh, here's the flashlight. Don't be a moron. Take the flashlight, right? Read the directions. It's like putting together something that you, your, your wife comes home from Ikea or some god-awful place, right? And then you... They say, here's the direction. No, that's a bad example because those directions are just pictures. And you're like, is that a, is that a toggle or is that a three-inch, is that a two-inch screw? What is that, right? I don't feel like there's been enough people that's put together stuff from Ikea in this place. You don't really understand what I'm saying, right? So if you're like me, you throw out all the hardware and you just go and get some three-inch screws and you start drilling stuff together, right? <laughs> The next thing, and this is, this is my favorite, determine your gifts and strengths. Look around the room. We're all made differently. You don't think that's for a reason? Like, there's people in here that have skills. Like, there's things that everyone in here, like, you're good at, and there's things that you're bad at. And there's things that I'm good at, and there's things that you're, like, you know get what I'm saying? That's for a reason. God has given us very specific Gifts and strengths. And this is kind of where my, my sermon title is today. I'm not a pastor. Okay? I'm not. They say, and the reason is because I don't have the, the gifts or strengths to do that job. You know, God did not call me to do that because he is wise and all-knowing. <laughs> right? He knows that if CJ is a pastor, there's probably not going to be a church. <laughs> I, I just don't, I don't have the patience to deal with the things that pastors do. I, I don't. Like, you know, number one, there's, there's a lot of crazy in church. There's a lot of crazy. And you can say, well, I'm not just saying church. I'm just saying, you know, let's just say that the, the average person, there's one out of every 20 people is a little bit eh, different. Look around the room. You're dealing with a handful of them, right? It, it's, and it's, it's funny. It's true, I'm telling you. When I, when, growing up in church, you know, I grew up in, in, in the kind of church where, you know, you, granted, the people, if you felt a word of God, like you could get up on stage and they'd hand you the microphone and you could talk about what God had laid on your heart. We have rules against that here. And I'll tell you why is because you don't know what you're going to get. Amen. Like, we were doing a revival one time. Back in the 116 days, we're doing this revival. And, man, it was awesome. People were feeling it, right? And this lady gets up there and grabs a microphone, and she starts talking about being kidnapped by aliens. And, And we didn't have like good sound. You know, 116, we're scraping stuff. So we didn't have like Brett with the sound and remote this and iPads this. It was like, where is the mute button? Somebody find the cord, unplug it. <laughs> like, and because people don't understand, like, it's not okay for you to get up here and talk and trash your, your daughter in law. It's not okay. Why would you do that? Right? Well, you sit there and go, yeah, I get that. Well, not all people do. <laughs> right? That's why. Don't come up here. So, like, here, here's the thing. If you ever come up here and someone's you're like, can I, can I speak? And they say, mm, no. Don't take it personal. It's not you. It might not have been you. Oh, it might have been. But it's not you. It's just that, guess what? We've been burned on that. Right? It's not a good look. No one wants to hear about kidnapped by aliens and all that garbage, you know? And you only have to deal with, I mean, there's, there's some things out there. Pastors are expected to listen to people's problems. There's a lot of problems. I get having problems, man. I do. 
I just don't really want to deal with them, you know? Like, I'm just too blunt to be, like, if I could, a pastor or like a counselor would be the opposite. That would be me, like, acting out of the flesh and doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. I, that would be a, a perfect example of me just doing away with my strengths and my gifts, just throwing them out there. I'm just too blunt. You know, pastors get like, this lady comes in and she's like, I can't, I, don't, I just, I can't get my, uh, my daughter to come to church. I don't know what to do. And I'd be like, she's 11. Bust her hind in. <laughs> she lives in your house. My daughter's 12. Did she tell me what she's going to do? <laughs> or, pastor, my spouse left me. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Well, maybe you should have thought about that before you decided to run around on them. There's consequences to every action. Just too blunt. That's why there wouldn't be a church. And if there were people here, they'd be the ones that's got their stuff together, right? Or they'd be having problems like, I ain't gonna talk to that guy. No, and I say that in a way that, that's funny, but I say that in a way that I'm not trying to be mean. I just, that's not my skill set. That's not my strength. I, that's not me. I'm just going to tell you how it is. Like, that's the, only, that's the way that I'm made. That's why God didn't call me to be in that position. Like a good shepherd will leave its flock and go and pull a, a, a sheep's head out of, its, out of a fence, right? Like, and it'll, it'll grab that sheep and it'll pet its head. And it'll tell it, like, don't do that, man. Like, you know, that fence, you're really going to get, it's gonna, your head's going to get stuck in there. Right? Like, every time that this thing goes and does that, oh, like, petting its head. Whereas I'm like, after this thing happens multiple times, I'm like, hey, moron. If you stick your head in that fence, it's going to get stuck. Stop doing that. Right? See the difference? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Lord. Somebody. Here we go. We as an American people, we fail miserably at this. We fail miserably at determining our gifts and strengths. And then when we can't do our own, we can't see our own, we lie to others about theirs. <laughs> We're just not honest people. You all laugh. You laugh. But I, like, what was that when American Idol came out? Right? Anybody, everybody remember that? You'd have people on there, like the highlights would be the people who couldn't what? They couldn't sing. They were terrible. Like, it was hilarious. They were terrible. And we laugh at them. But I'm thinking deep down going, that person has been lied to their entire life. Like, their parents never told them, you know what, sweetheart, this is probably not a good idea for you to go on national television and sing because you're no good. Like, that's not your gift. That's the way that I am with my kids. And I'm not going to win any parent awards of the year and all that stuff. I'm not, it's not going to happen. But I'm gonna, they're going to know the truth. They're never going to show up on one national television in a singing audition if they can't sing. They're going to know from the beginning. Guess what? God, God just didn't bless you with that skill. It's not your gift. Find out what your gift is. Focus there. Right? And you can see it throughout the church. You can see... People that are in leadership in this church, Matt and Amanda Hall, example. Matt is a great youth leader. Why? Because he's out of his mind. He's got, he's got seven times more energy than the average person. And the kids love him. 
And Amanda's a good fit, too, because at the end of the day, there's got to be some adult supervision in the place. <laughs> right? But you've seen people who, who just are doing things that, man, you've got no reason to. And just because they're good things doesn't mean that you should do them. I'm really big into, into softball ministry, and I love it, man. God has really called me to it, and it's something that, you want to get that? No. It's something that, it's something that God has really, has placed in my heart. But one thing that I, that, that I am all about is when I go into those prisons, I want to take the best team that I can. I ain't, I ain't interested. If you can't play softball, you can go, and you can talk, but you ain't playing. Like, I want to take a good team. There you go. I ain't got to hurt your feelings, but the whole point is, is that when we go roll into those prisons, I want to beat those inmates as bad as I possibly can. Amen. No, you laugh, but there's a reason. You, you think they're going to respect and have anything to listen to you if you go in there and you are terrible and they beat the brakes off of you? No, they're going to say, these guys are jokes. But when you beat them by 30, they look at you and go, hmm, these guys are good. We like these guys. Let's, let's, okay, you've humbled us. Let's listen to what you got to say. But I know people who do the same thing that I do, take a team into ministries and probably haven't won a game in like five years inside the prison. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, just because it's a good thing, those people don't respect you. You've got to earn your respect, especially inside. Like, you haven't won a game in five years? You're wasting your time, man. Now, if you want to go and just play to be playing, help those guys. That's awesome. But don't go expecting for, for to, uh, anything to, that you say to be taken seriously. Right? They've got a chaplain that's been going in there for like years and years and years. You've got to know your season. You've got to know your season. I've been already in talks with, with the pastors in the church to saying, listen, don't let me get to that point where I'm irrelevant. I want to shut it down. I want to have somebody else come in here and do lead worship in this place way before I get to that place. Don't let me get to being irrelevant because now I'm just wasting time. But there's a chaplain that's been going there for years, and he's gotten to the point where, guess what? He can't talk 2019. And that's great. You know, there's going to come a time where, where Matt Hall and Amanda, they're going to have to... It's just the way it is, right? Because you have to stay relevant. Anybody dealing in any type of leadership, you've got to stay relevant. And these guys are going, I was like, how was service? And they're like, service was terrible. Like, we, love, you know, we do better, we have better services when, our, when we just do our own small group. And I'm like, hmm. He's like, the guy means well. It's just, it's getting bad, CJ. Like 20 years ago, he was all right. Got to know your strengths. Got to know when to get out. Like, if you can't sing, if you can't play instrument, God's probably not called you to the worship band, right? Amen. But what are you good at? Like, what is it that you are good at? Because more times than not, God has called you to something that, do, that deals with that. Like, what is your strength? He created you for a purpose. He created you unique. He gave you that set of gifts and strengths for a reason. What is it that you're good at? Some people in here are sitting there going, I don't have a clue what I'm good at. Well, then ask somebody that knows you. You realize that? Like, I'll ask my wife, what am I good at? She would tell me. Singing is not one of them. But she would tell me what I'm good at. And sometimes she would say things that, she would say something that I'm like, hmm, I didn't even realize that I was good at that. You think I'm good at that? Yeah, I think you're really good at that. Ask someone. Get some advice. Someone that knows you. Just ask them, what am I good at? What do you think that I'm, is that I'm good at? 
Know your strengths. Get in your word. Read the directions. And in the end, trust God. Psalms 23, verse 2 and 3, and I don't have this on the screen. This is late added. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. He's going to lead you down the path that he wants you to go. So take a look at your life today. Am I living blatantly against the Bible? Do I have joy? Do I have fulfillment? Do I know my strengths? What are my strengths? What is God's purpose? I'm going to be in prayer about it. I'm going to use the directions. I'm going to ask God, what is it that you want me to do? And in the end, trust in him. Don't just wander. I mean, just don't wander. Be in research mode, right? Search. God has called you to a certain purpose. Today could be that day that you really grab it and go, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. And then when you're living with purpose, when you are purpose is there and, and every day is meaningful, you find yourself getting out of bed in the mornings, spring in your step, knowing, yes, this is what God has called me to do.